Welcome, valued partners, guests, and LPGA family. We know this is a very strange and sometimes stressful time, and we would like to give you 30 minutes to relax and enjoy your lunch while learning something that will help you be a better golfer or just be ready to jump in when you need to make that crucial putt in the next Pro-Am. My name is Kiernan Schindler, and as a member of the Corporate Partnership Team and an LPGA Class A member, I'm, I'm excited to host you all today. The LPGA has a terrific platform that you all joined today. Um, our partner is NEC, and they have provided this platform. It has, uh, it's called Universe Blue, has a lot of great bells and whistles. Um, you're going to be able to send little emojis when you're feeling, you know, the mood. Um, you also can send questions in, and then we'll uh, potentially, if we have time, maybe uh, run a couple polls. Um, today's topic is putting. Um, and um, we have with us today um, two very um, special guests who are Kay Cockrell, who um, we have uh, come to, coming to us from San Francisco, her home there. And we have Jamie Fisher, who is an LPGA Class A professional, and she is coming us, to us from Indian Ridge Golf Club in Palm Desert. Kay Cockrell, as most of you may know, longtime LPGA Tour member. Additionally, um, she is a uh, been part of the LPGA family in so many ways, and she is a Golf Channel analyst and commentator. There you go, thus the logo. Um, Jamie will kick us off with our outdoor lesson, as we're all jealous of you, Jamie, over there. Um, not, all, not all of us have access to that beauty, so um, we've also got Kay, who's gonna talk to us a little bit about indoor activities that some of us have to still do. Um, so Jamie, why don't you take it away? All right. Well, thank you very much, Kieran. I'm, I'm very honored to join this group today, and I'm super proud and honored to be joining Kay in this webinar also and spending just a few minutes with all of you uh, doing some fun. I am lucky, as you mentioned, because we do have some golf here in Southern California that's available to us, and I'm very thankful for that. Uh, so I'll start with kind of some of the outdoor stuff we can do, and, and I'll just a quick disclaimer, as you can see, I, I'm not able to be on a putting green only because our Wi-Fi doesn't uh, reach quite to our putting green. But nonetheless, I think uh, I, I think we'll still get the idea and have an opportunity to learn some great stuff about putting. So uh, as Karen mentioned, I'm going to touch on some of the outside stuff that you can do as soon as you're able to get outside. And uh, there are two big things that we're going to focus on to start. One is making solid contact with the putts. And, and Kay is going to give you some great drills indoors that you can work on to do that. I'm going to show you a couple outdoor things here. One of the big things that we see that great putters do is they are really great at distance control. So solid contact plays a big part in that. But also, you need to practice it. So I've got a couple little drills here, a couple little exercises I'm going to show you that I typically share with my students in an effort to get them to practice that. So the first one, as you can see, I've got a stick set up over there. It's yellow. Hopefully you can see that. And, and uh, if I don't use the stick, I use the edge of the green, the fringe. And I have a string line uh, just in front of that. And I've got that set up today just on some, uh, uh, some sleeves of golf balls, again, just so that you can see it very well. Then moving back from that, you'll see I've got uh, tees at different distances from that spot. And the goal here is to roll the ball where it passes the string line, but it doesn't jump the stick. So I'm going to demonstrate that now and then I'll and then I'll come back up a little closer. Good. So that crossed the string line but didn't jump the stick. Yeah. You can see that last one uh, jumped the stick, so I hit that just a little bit too firm. But you notice that I'm not standing in the same place over and over and hitting the exact same putt over and over. We want you to be able to practice where you change it up a little bit and you putt from some different places. Uh, and uh, as you are moving through that, you'll start to get a feel for distance. Again, don't stand in the same place and hit the same putt over and over um, every single time. So um, I'm going to throw it back to Kay, and she'll talk a little bit now about how you can make great contact, and it'll really help you with a drill like this. Yeah, and um, Jamie, we had an audience question that I wanted to run by you. Um, one of the things that everyone's really curious about is 
what's it like out there? You're living in a community where every single golf, you know, every community is based on golf. So tell us what it's been like and what have you been doing to keep your game sharp? <laughs> All right. Sure. Um, well, uh, golf out here is, uh, it's interesting. Our tee times are definitely spaced out. They're, they're every 15 minutes. Um, uh, I am in a gated golf course community and there are no guests allowed currently. Uh, it's member only play and uh, you can play in a foursome, but, uh, and it's primarily carts. So mm -hmm. if you, you can ride in a cart with somebody that you share a house with, otherwise you need to ride in your own cart and, uh, um, there's no, you know, shared anything like that. We have, uh, you know, no bunker rakes. All of the ball washers are, are bagged. You can't touch those. Um, we have the, the cup liners turned over so the ball doesn't go all the way down into the cup. So you can you know, make a putt, but it doesn't, you know, sink all the way to the bottom. Uh, it's so it's, you know, it's with restrictions, but we, but we have golf and, uh, and that's a really, that's a really good thing. Where I am also, it's been incredibly hot. Um, we had a two week stretch where we were well over a hundred every single day. So tea times were starting at 6.40 in the morning and, wow. and for a while we had a very full tea sheet and people were teeing off pretty, you know, pretty regularly up until about 10.30, 11 o'clock. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, as you can imagine, it got sort of quieter after that uh, just because of the heat. Sure. So, but yeah. it, uh, we're fortunate we've got golf. Yeah, that's great. And as far as you go, are you getting out to play or are you just packed with lessons? <laughs> uh, not packed with lessons. Actually, I've been doing a lot of on-course lessons because our range usage is restricted uh, to the people who are getting ready to go play. We only have it available as you warm up. So I've actually mm -hmm. been doing a lot of on-course lessons and I do them at about 7 a.m. again to beat the heat and then to beat the turn time, beat the, beat the people who are teeing off. Yeah. Um, so I've been doing a lot of encore sessions, which is actually terrific and super fun. It's got a lot of context and maybe even more fun than, than a typical lesson where you're standing on the range or in the short game practice area. Mm -hmm. um, as for me, I've been trying to get out and do some drills too, uh, like this. And, you know, I come out and play nine holes, but I, I wait till all the members have played and I'll come out at like, you know, five or 6 PM. Right. Uh, do that when the temperature is coming back down a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's probably prudent. Um, what is the approximate distance is another question that came in between the string and the stick. This is from Joyce Bassett. Yeah, terrific question. Thank you for asking. Um, I've got this at about two and a half feet. If you want to make it tough, you know, keep it in that range. If, if you're a higher handicapper, I'd go out a little bit longer. Most people are putting with a putter that's anywhere from 33 to 35 inches. And that's, mm -hmm. a, good, that's a good ballpark too. You could just use your putter to help you figure that out. Yeah. Yep, great question. Kind of like in the leather, you know. Yeah, um, in the leather. Yeah, and I like if you wanted to know how far to set the tees back, you know, depending yeah. on your space. Um, if you can set them up, you know, five feet apart and set five or six of them back, that's great. And I would start at about, you know, 15 to 18 feet and then back yourself up um, mm -hmm. you know, every five feet from there. Yeah. And we're, oh, we have Darby on the screen. That's great. We have a, a dog visitor. Um, <laughs> one of the things I wanted to say, too, is that um, you all can relax and enjoy your lunch because um, we're going to be sending these tips out later. So you do not have to take notes, which is always my favorite thing in class not to have to do that. Um, hey, we're going to kick it to you here in San Francisco at your uh, wonderful home. Um, if anyone knows, uh, San Francisco has had a little bit of a different situation with um, just COVID and, and some of the restrictions. Quickly, like, Kay, what, you know, what, what have you been up to and, and how are you keeping your game sharp? Yeah, well, um, the golf courses around here pretty much closed on March. Uh, my last round was March 13th and mm -hmm. they closed on the 15th, 16th. Okay. And just recently, golf opened up two weeks ago, and uh, it's been really exciting for a lot of people to get back out and, and get onto the golf course. Limited practice facilities, but it's just been nice getting out, walking, and, and playing. Um, I'm fortunate to be a member at the Olympic Club, so I have a beautiful facility to play and practice. But I do a lot of practicing inside. I do it whether we're in a pandemic or whether it's just a normal routine year because I'm a big believer of working on some fundamentals and some specific things in your golf stroke or your swing away from the golf course so you can groove those things. And then when you get out to the golf course, 
just think about one or two little top tips and get out and start feeling and visualizing the shots because playing golf is more about what you see and, and feeling the grass under your feet and and really getting into the shot. And hopefully you've done a little bit of homework and a little bit of practice, just even holding a club a couple times a day in the evening and taking little half swings or with a putter, which I love putting. Putting is the favorite, my favorite part of the game. It's something you can easily do in the house. You're not going to risk hurting any furniture or hitting anybody in the head or taking out any lampshades. Mm -hmm. So with putting, I'm a firm believer of um, well, I think about some of my favorite players on the LPGA Tour, Lydia Ko, Christy Kerr, Inby Park. Those are three probably of the best putters on tour, and they are three different physiques, three different styles. And that's something I want to impart to you guys is putting is very personal. So it's a lot about finding a setup that's comfortable to you, whether you like to stand up a little taller or maybe bend over bend over a little bit more. I happen to sort of split the middle and go a little bit where I'm just sort of feeling like I'm maybe going to sit back a little bit onto a bar stool. And then I'm tall enough where I can just let my arms hang, hang naturally. And that's a big key because we want to be natural and relaxed when we're putting. Um, so much tension is the root of all evil in the golf game. So if you can keep your neck your shoulders, your arms, and then your hands really soft on the club. So I think about relaxing my shoulders. Lydia Ko does something really great before she puts. She shrugs her shoulders back a couple of times, and that helps her get the relaxation that she needs in her shoulders because we all carry tension with us. And then when the, when the times get a little tough or you're coming down the stretch trying to win a tournament or you're coming down the stretch trying to – trying to beat your opponent or maybe shoot your best score, you're going to maybe get a little tension. So very important to stay relaxed. And then you want to grip the putter. Let me tilt this down just a little bit. You want to grip the putter very lightly. I, I was taught like you, almost like you're holding a baby bird. So you're really holding on to the putter quite lightly. And that enables you to see this triangle that my, my shoulder, my arms, and my hands create mm -hmm. that shoulder or that triangle just hangs really loosely and I'm going to initiate the stroke back and through with my shoulders and that's essentially the putting stroke I'm going to move this down a little bit more so you can see I'm going to go over to my little putting um, area over here so the putting stroke is probably the most simple movement in golf because you're basically just taking the putter low to the ground back and through there's no big wide arc you know you, you don't there's no time to really make this crazy loopy move you're just your goal is to just take the putter back and through and I've got this little putting mat that has lines on it so I work trying to cut right down the line, keeping my cutter as low as possible and staying relaxed and moving the putter blade back and through. If you don't have one of these fancy putting mats, you can simply put down a couple of um, clubs on the ground parallel to each other. And this is something I did, I'll, I'll stand back up, this is something I did all throughout junior golf college golf, amateur golf, and even into my pro career in a hotel room. I put two clubs down parallel to each other just outside the, uh, the width of the putter head and just ingrain that back and through stroke. If you hit the top part of the putter shaft, I mean the, the shaft, that means you're taking it too far outside. If you hit the inside, it means you're, you're taking it too far inside. And so if you can just groove this back and through stroke, that in itself is going to help you next time you go out to play. You've got this sort of this grooved, simple motion down. And then when you get onto the putting green at the golf course, you can just think about speed and break. The last thing that I want to um, reiterate, or I don't even know if I've said it yet, but probably one of the most important things is to stay really steady over the putter. Because this is not a big movement where you're taking the club back and through. You don't want any 
upper body movement or any lower body movement. You want everything to stay as steady as possible. One way I think about that is I visualize my lower body is encased in a big cube of ice, like a big block of ice. So it stays really steady. And the other thing I think about is my head stays really still until I've struck the ball. So between keeping your lower body absolutely steady and your head completely quiet, you're able to better take that nice stroke back and through. So those are my basic keys that I work on constantly. I mean, I've been playing this game for over 40 years. I watch the best play on the LPGA and the PGA Tour in these little details, that simple back and through strokes, staying relaxed, keeping the putter low to the ground, staying very steady with your body and your head. Those are things the top players work on day in and day out because they know those little details are so important to hitting that putt consistently. Then they can take it out to the golf course and work on the things that Jamie is pointing out that help you learn how to develop speed. And Kay, one of the questions that came in um, was just as far as what you've seen, I mean, I always notice that the money list and the top putters uh, sort of go hand in hand. Um, just who practice, who just like burns the midnight oil practicing on the putting greens? Who doesn't? <laughs> um, we all do. Everybody puts their time in. And in fact, I think of a, a good example is Lexi Thompson, who has always been one of the longest, strongest ball strikers out on tour. And she realized she needed to up her game with her putting. She not, is not a naturally gifted putter. So mm -hmm. three years ago, the winter before the 2017 season, she put two hours in a day on her putting every single day. And she came out and just, you know, lit it up because her ball striking is always there. And right. now she was able to start making, well, she was much better on the two, three, and four footers. So if you're making those short putts, that frees you up to then feel more aggressive and, and more confident on the longer putts. You can give it a little bit extra and know you'll, you're going to make the comebacker. But she just became uh, so, so much more improved with her putting. And that's what it takes, just putting in the reps. Yeah. And putting in that time gives you confidence. And putting's all about confidence. Right. Christy Kerr is probably one of the most confident putters I've ever seen. And her, her putting stroke isn't actually that perfect but she believes in it wholeheartedly and she takes it to the course every day. I think for Solheim cup, I've heard many players say, if you had the cup on the line, who would you put the butter in their hands? And it is always Christy Kerr. So <laughs> yeah, don't her out. Um, speaking of Solheim cup, uh, Brittany Altamare last year was playing in her first Solheim cup. And I was out walking with her group yeah. um, in the, practice session and she was working with her coach Mark Sweeney he was over there and they were doing nothing but speed drills every single green it was all about speed developing better speed speed so that when um, the competition started on Friday she was totally confident about the speed of the greens that's terrific um, we're going to kick it back to Jamie I, um, Jamie's going to talk to us a little bit about when we were doing some of our preliminary discussions you mentioned a lot about um, just the confidence that you instill in your students. So I'd love you to touch on that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. And hey, that was terrific. Thank you so much. I know everybody who was watching is going to get a lot out of what you said. And I mentioned solid contact to start as being a really key ingredient. And I know the things that you said are going to be a key for them to pick up on and make solid contact. And that, that plays a big role in being able to have great distance control again, which is what you just mentioned. You saw the tour players working out a lot, especially before the Solheim Cup. So with respect to confidence, you know, it's interesting. A couple of years ago, I started asking my students, you know, what are you thinking about when you're putting? And it was amazing to me what I would hear, even on a four footer, uh, you know, thinking about taking a club straight back and straight through or keeping my head still. And they were, they were you know, oh, I've got to make this for two down in our match. And there's just too many thoughts. And... <laughs> Too many stressful thoughts at that. So this is an exercise I actually learned uh, from the great Fred Shoemaker, who's a fantastic teacher. And um, this is how it's going to work. I'll explain it first, and then I'll uh, and then I'll demonstrate it. I'm going to put several balls in a row just to the stick, which is right next to uh, my my yellow disc there, or my white disc, which is representing the cup. But 
I'm gonna put several balls to that stick from just three or four feet away. And the intent here is just to self-observe. You know, notice the lack of tension, notice the relaxation, notice the lack of tight grip pressure, no teeth clenching, none of that. It's just to self-observe. And then I'm gonna turn and putt to the cup. And the idea is to have the exact same feelings in my body, the exact same relaxation when I'm putting to the cup. And it's a terrific way to highlight the difference if you haven't done this yet. So I'm gonna to putt to the stick and then I'm just gonna turn and putt the last one to the cup. times over and you can wait a while before you can cut to the cup and, and I think you'll notice you know, it's not hard to hit a stick so you'll notice how relaxed you all of a sudden feel when you know you're going to hit the stick and mm -hmm. take a breath and notice you know no, no, again notice the lack of tension that you feel when you're putting to the stick and if you see that's different or sense that's different when you have to turn and cut to the cup you really are educating yourself about how relaxed feel when you putt versus maybe how relaxed you actually do feel when you're putting to the cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, I just, I just changed location because our wonderful SF city uh, workers are out starting to fill a pothole in the front of our house. <laughs> Um, as we know on webinars, whenever there's something that needs to happen, it happens exactly when you're starting your webinar. So. <laughs> um, okay, great. Well, um, we wanted to just run a little intro, oh, and there's Danny Dan. Um, we wanted to um, run a video for you all that we, we at the LPGA feel very inspired. Whenever we've shown it, you know, sometimes there's not a dry eye in the house. So Cheryl, if you wouldn't mind running the video for our audience. This is for every girl who's ever been laughed at or told she doesn't belong. This is for every girl who's been told she's too loud, too quiet, too this or too that. This is for every girl who thinks her body isn't good enough. This is for every girl who feels she doesn't fit in. This is for every girl who's been told that success and kindness are two different things. This is for every girl who's been told to give up. This is us crushing it for you. So you can crush it for the next girl. And Kay, um, how did the players feel about being part of that? They love it. It's a great ad campaign. It's really inspiring and empowering to women and and women's golf. And I think all of us who watch that video, we can relate to the feelings, positive and negative, that, that you know, striving for our goals to become first collegiate players and then work our way into the LPGA Tour and then uh, careers in and around golf in various ways, like Jamie as a teacher, me now as a commentator. Um, there's certainly, when I was growing up, there were hardly any women teachers. And now there's so many more. And it's, it's just... There's more role models out there, and and I'm a role model in in the work that I do in television, and I talk with a lot of young girls and boys about the potential of, of getting a job in television, and one of the things I, I show them is you see me up front in front of the camera, but there are a lot of jobs behind the scenes as producers and audio and graphics, so just having women in positions that they didn't have before opens everybody uh, everybody's eyes and gives everyone a chance to think that they can get there someday. Yeah, and Jamie, um, a couple of the fun facts I learned about both of you. One, Jamie, um, I know Jamie's mother, and she was an LPJ tour player. I mean, how does your mom feel about where where everything is now between you being a professional that can make a terrific living working, you know, part of your year in Conway Farms, part of your year down at Indian Ridge. Um, what does she think about all this with the with the way that things have come for for women in the game? Yeah, um, th thank you, Karen. Um, well, 
My mom is actually just a few days shy of her 80th birthday, as a matter of fact. And uh, uh, I, I was yeah. just, yeah. She <laughs> started, emoji. Come on. <laughs> well, she started golf at age five. So she's been playing golf for 75 years. And I, I'm just like that sentence is sort of mind boggling to me uh, to say out loud. But, um, you know, my mom is very appreciative of the opportunities that she had. And she has also recognized that I've had infinitely more opportunities than she's had. And um, you know, I don't know our timing here, but, uh, you know, my mom went to Northwestern University and, and I, she always tells the story about how she wanted to take a final exam a little bit early because there was a uh, there was an intercollegiate women's golf event it wasn't called the NCAA at that time uh, and she tried to get permission from her professor to take a final early so she could go you know go to that golf tournament and her professor wouldn't give her permission to leave and and even said what makes you think anybody wants rep wants you representing Northwestern University in a golf tournament uh, wow. <laughs> yeah one one generation later I, I was fortunate enough to to be a you know division one collegiate athlete at the University of Texas on a golf scholarship and as you said have uh, been able to make an incredible living uh, teaching and coaching this game I love and I learned it from my mother so I just feel like it's a, a you know beautiful a representation of the evolution of women's golf and, and how far it's come and realizing that we still, you know, have some, have some steps to take, but, uh, but it's pretty neat when I think about it in the uh, context of the arc of my mom's life as well. And, and Northwestern has ended up having one of the top teams in the nation. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yep. That's exactly right. All right, well, we are getting close to our time, but I just wanted to thank you all so much for your time. Um, we really appreciate it. And we know, and both of our pros here have volunteered their time. Um, as a thank you, we um, are going to, in your honor, donate to the Marilyn Smith Scholarship Fund. Um, yeah, she is, um, you know, our lady. We, we miss her so much. It's near and dear to all of our hearts. Um, we hope you have everyone who's on the line. We appreciate your time as well. Um, we really hope you have a productive um, and um, stress-free rest of your day. I hope we gave a little light and um, some fun to your day. And as remember what we say at the LPGA, uh, when things get tough, drive on. Drive on. Drive on. Thanks <laughs> for having me. It's been great. Thanks, guys. Thank